Unboxing and reviewing the final issue of Red Shetland. Hey everyone, it's VM Campos, comic book fan. I've got something interesting here for you. The final issue of Red Shetland. Who's Red Shetland? Well, you might have heard of Red Sonia. Red Sonia, AKA the She-Devil with a Sword, is a classic character from the world of Conan. That is his equivalent. She is basically the most powerful warrior in the old days of the Conan age. She's existed in comics for a long time, starting off at Marvel Comics in the 70s. You do not mess with Red Sonja because you're gonna lose. Several years ago, she went off to Dynamite Entertainment and has had a variety of issues published. Recently, they've been doing these pretty amazing cosplay covers. There are many reasons why we enjoy these cosplay covers. And every time I see one, I try to uh, get a copy. We're not here to talk about Red Sonja, we're here to talk about Red Shetland. That's exactly what she sounds like. She is a furry parody version of Red Sonja, co-created by Jim Grote and Richard Conkle in the early 80s. Her first issue debuted in 1989. From the long gone publisher Graphics Express, Buxom Barbarian She-Horse, Funny Animal Adventure As You Like It, which is a parody of, of the first Red, uh, Red Sonja comic. This was $2 back in 1989. Pretty outlandish. August 1989 to be specific. Her series went on and off for 11 issues in the 90s. I remember seeing Jim Grote at Tango Comic Con throughout the 90s. I kind of still kick myself that I never got a sketch from him. I, ha I haven't seen him have his own Comic Con booth in a long time. But Conkel and Grote are a couple of gray muzzles in the world of furry fandom. Red Shetland actually debuted in uh, the sort of sister series, Equine the Uncivilized, which itself is a parody of Conan comics. Illustrious first issue, stupendous first issue, collectible first issue, combustible first issue. It's not too bad for a first issue. Uh, it's actually kind of technically slightly oversized in the average comic. Oh, independent publishers of the 80s, I love you. It was in issue number two that Red Shetland debuted on the very last page, where she swears to get vengeance upon Equine. She proved pretty popular. Equine only had, I think, uh, maybe also like nine or ten issues. And so Shetland proved popular. She got her own series in 1989 that went out throughout the 90s. But we're not here to talk about the first issue. We might do that on another video at another time. We're here to talk about the last issue, the rare last issue which is right here. I haven't opened it yet, so let's open it together and review the final issue of Red Shetland. Now I've seen uh, in 2020 the rise of comic collecting just going completely out of hand. Uh, people are paying lots of money for a variety of comics that you wouldn't expect. Being stuck at home has given people a lot of disposable income. So this comic that I've seen here, as of this video, I see someone trying to sell it for $999. The final issue of Red Shetland is being sold or attempted to be sold for hundreds of dollars. I bought a copy, way cheaper than that. There's a little bit of damage to it. We'll see how bad it is in real life. But because of the FOMO of it all, and I like the character and it's not a big series to collect, it's only 11 issues, I got my own copy before the prices are really outlandish. Yes, $999 is outlandish, but no one's gonna pay for that. So let's open this up. Here it is, the final issue. It was $350. Why rent when you can own? Uh, that was uh, Graphics Express's uh, slogan that I would always see in their books. And it's uh, the Shetland books had this style at a certain point where they had this colored border so I, I guess you can then quickly uh, discern it from the from the other comics and a uh, pretty violent scene here now here's what the damage is that that's a tear in the corner a very obvious tear in the corner that that does definitely ruin the eye appeal of this book and I can see already there's some you know imperfections here and there but you know what do you expect this is a independently published comic book um, that um, has gotten a little bit beat up oh there's red Shetland I didn't even see her okay so let's completely look at it. So there's a lot of history in, in this comic. As I said, this is a uh, this is an independently published 
furry comic from the 80s. Uh, this kind of like defined the fandom, what it is today. Jim Grote and Richard Conkle creation. Mark William Black Fox Wallace, 1953 to 1997. One of the big names in furry fandom at the time. Cool tribute to him at the end here. And yeah, here is the damage. It just is completely torn out right here. So it's no longer a $999 book. As per the course, the interiors are completely black and white, newsprint, and uh, here we start off with an editorial from the head Bozo Jim Grote and his lovely wife Rebecca Grote. So they go on to talk about here how the co-creator Richard Conkle, he went into the military and he's being sent off to different parts of the world, so it was hard to, to publish the issues on a consistent basis. There's a mention of, uh, of William Black Fox, how he worked on issues of equine and Shetland, he passed on. And again, par for the course, there were a variety of t-shirts. Uh, there was like the classic uh, Stan Sakai Usagi Ojimbo version 1 t-shirt. There was the Albedo t-shirt from Steve Galachi. Joshua Quagmire's Cutie Bunny. And uh, Get Your Own Red Shetland uh, t-shirt. I wonder if any of these still exist nowadays. It'd be really cool to wear one of these vintage uh, 80s t-shirts at the next Comic Con. Oh, and here we have, we've got our website. Uh, we will post it on our web site, www.graphexpress.com. Let's see if that website still exists. All right, let's see if that website still exists. Go. Huge domains. This is for sale for $3,000. 24 payments of 133. Uh, okay, well, if you want to resurrect uh, Red Shetland, you just need to invest $3,000 in the domain, unfortunately. We have here Ed Zolna's mailbox books. Oh, I remember that. Um, write to them and tell them VM Campo sent you. Shout out to some conventions. These indie books often had some cool, fun stuff in the Indicia. You can check it out for yourself right here. Screenshot that and, and lovingly read that because there's something about cannibals and stuff. And here we have the January 1998 copyright of it all. So what I liked about the Red Shetland comics is that the artwork is, is great. It's this great cartoony style to things. The panel layout is always pretty interesting. Uh, here we have like a, a ninja in the shadows, great worm's eye view and such. And so we, uh, it's interesting to mix like the high fantasy things with ninjas. Uh, I think Conan himself did it too. There's a shout out back to issue number four. There's Red Shetland in her winter outfit, I guess. So yeah, really cool art, cool panel layout. This is issue number 11, so there's a lot that you've missed. I also don't remember what previously happened in the previous issues. I think there was also like just a, a mixture of real world modern stuff with this fantasy stuff. I know Terry Smith also worked on the book here and there, but this is one of the better black and white comics because it was very easy. Oh no, it was very easy to um, do very bad black and white uh, work where people would just uh, really overdo it and you couldn't see what was going on just so much detail. They were sort of like trying to fill in these uh, these patterns in outfits and stuff, but then it, it was just not so much action, but it was just, it just didn't, it didn't show up well when actually printed. So as, as I'm just browsing through the comic here, we see that we get a great sense of the various characters on their background. Sometimes those backgrounds are very simplified. They're obviously fighting in the snow. So maybe, is that a cheat? And uh, just the action and the movement and the anatomy and uh, it's it's all it's expert stuff. These the creators of this comic are uh, one of the high standards of furry comics, but independent published comics. Uh, very fun storytelling. There's cool action and silliness. Uh, panel layout. Uh, very cool characters. So I'm gonna read this on detail eventually. But there's a big battle in the snow, and then it ends here to be continued. Sadly, it never was. 
Uh, this series never, never went on to this. This is the final issue, 1998. I know with like Albedo, the other big furry comic, that went on to several volumes for 20 years and also was never completed. So that's kind of par for the course for these independent publishers. They have their heyday and they have their fans and followers, but then they, they, they never kind of finish. And I think that's fine. I, I'm not one of these obsessive fans that when Cowboy Bebop ended, I was fine with what it ended, 26 episodes and an amazing ending. And there's sort of a, a mystique about the to be continued, but it never actually does. So that's kind of interesting. I like that. And here we have the uh, goodies from Graphics Express to spend your hard-earned money on. Warning, bad attitude, full color design. I want that one. Another full color design here. I've taken an oath of celibacy, so don't F with me. Relatable. And this very cool design here. Hilarious characters. Only $16, $2 shipping. The artist portfolio. Cheesecake portfolio. The animated short. Two cartoons, six minutes VHS format. What? Hmm, can the can I track those down and see those somewhere on YouTube? Gives me vibes of Eric Schwartz's Amy the Squirrel. And then calendars, subscription. Oh, we're offering subscriptions to a series that has now ended, unfortunately. And then there's their information there. Madison, Wisconsin. So another interesting comic to add to my collection here. As I said, if you check eBay, prices for this, I, I, there's one, I'll put them up on the screen right now, but these uh, prices have been outlandish, and I was surprised to see this one at a very affordable price, obviously because there's a big tear in the corner. And I wonder if Konkel or Groat still have copies, pristine copies of these in storage somewhere. That's sort of like my dream, that these creators from back in the day still have boxes of these in their, in their garages in pristine condition. And if they do, more power to them. Go on eBay and start selling your final issues for $1,000 and retire. Finally have your creations really pay off. I'm still working to complete my collection of Rhett Shetland comics. They're not that expensive, but they're not 99 cents. I never see them out in the wild. You really can only get them on eBay. And then maybe later we'll do the companion piece of looking at the first issue to see where it started and where it's ending. So now I want to hear from you. Are you an 80s independent comic book fan? Are you a furry comic fan? Old school, new school, it's all good? Tell me about it in the comments. If you want to read this comic yourself, just go back into the video and pause it on each page and enjoy. Don't forget to like, share, comment on this video. I would really appreciate it. And if you really enjoy my stuff, consider pressing the join button right here in YouTube to pledge and become part of the VMC crew to unlock exclusive stuff or just to give support starting at 99 cents a month. I really appreciate it. If you can't quite pledge at the moment, no worries. Simply like, comment, share, subscribe, ring the bell. Battle the Minotaur. Be alerted to when I do my next comic book videos. Every week I do comic book videos, so check them out. This has been VM Campos, and I'll see you next time.